A line drawn parallel to a side of a triangle divides the sides in the same ratio. So this red triangle has a line in it that is parallel to one of its sides. So the arrows indicate the parallel lines. We find that the distance of this point to this point divided by the distance of this point to this point here is the same on the other side of the triangle. In other words, 12.74 divided by 8.06 will give us the same answer. And uh, that ratio is constant, even as I move this triangle around. When we do the divisions, we always get 1.58 for either side. So, in general, what we're going to prove is that this distance, which I'm calling A, divided by this distance F, equals B over G. So this line here is parallel to this side of the triangle. To prove the theorem, we construct two triangles by connecting point Z to M and point N to Y. Then we look at the area of triangle M, Y, Z and the area of triangle M, N, Y. Both triangles stand on the same base, Y, M. So they have the same base. Now what about the height of both triangles? Well, to find the perpendicular height of triangle M, Y, Z, we have to draw a perpendicular from Z to the line Y, M extended. Um, I haven't shown that here, but I've shown it for the other triangle. Triangle M, N, Y. This distance D is the perpendicular height of this triangle. But this distance D is the same over here. Because we form a rectangle. So the two triangles are between parallel lines. They're between the lines Y, M and Z, N. Which means that their perpendicular heights are the same. So we're looking at these two shaded triangles. The same base YM and the same perpendicular height D because the two triangles lie between two parallel lines. So since the area is given by half the base by the height, we see that the areas of both triangles are the same. The next thing we do is divide both sides of this equation by the area of triangle XYM. That's the area of this triangle here. So we divide M, Y, Z, this triangle by this triangle, and we do the same for the other triangle, M, N, Y, this one here. So we're dividing both sides by the same thing. Now let's get the triangle area of triangle M, Y, Z a different way from before. The last time we considered the distance D using Y, M as the base, then the perpendicular height was this distance here. We're not going to do that here. What we're going to do here is take YZ as the base. Now I'm calling this I, the distance of Y to Z. So we want half the base, half I times the perpendicular height. If this is the base, then the perpendicular height is the distance of the point M onto this line here, which I'm calling H1. So we would have to extend the base ZY and draw in this perpendicular, this dotted line here, which has length H1. So then the area is half the base by the height, a half times I times H1. Now the area of X, Y, M, that's this triangle on top here, is a half of its base, which is F, times its height, which is H1. Its height is also H1. So the two triangles have the same height. And as we saw in a previous video, the ratio of the areas of two triangles that have the same height is equal to the ratio of the bases, because the halves cancel and the heights cancel. So we just get the ratio of I over F. So we have I divided by F. Similarly on the other side, we get the area of triangle M, N, Y by considering this side here as base, which I'm calling J, and its height is the perpendicular distance of Y onto this line here. So we'd have to extend the base of this triangle. And this dotted line here has height H2. In general, of course, H1 and H2 are different. So the area of this triangle, MNY, is half the base by the perpendicular height. And uh, 
now we get the area of XYM. But this time we use H2 to get the area of triangle XYM and we use G as the base. So if G is the base then this is the height. So it's half the base by the height and as you can see we're dealing with triangles that have the same height H2 in this case so the ratio of the areas is just the ratio of the bases. So we end up getting that I over F equals J over G. We could turn both of these fractions upside down and if we do that we end up proving that F divided by I equals G divided by J. And this in itself is an important result. However, to get what we want to prove, we just have to adjust these two fractions. One way to get at the result we want is to add one to both sides. We haven't changed anything, but we can write one as i over i. So we can write the left hand side here as f over i plus i over i. And we can write the right hand side as g over j plus j over j. Because 1 is just j divided by itself and it's also just i divided by itself. And uh, if we get a common denominator here, on the left hand side it's i. And we have f plus i in the numerator. And getting a common denominator on the right hand side, we see that it's j. And in the numerator we will have g plus j. But we see that f plus i is just equal to a. a is the total distance. This distance here. And g plus j is just equal to b. That's the total distance here. But we see that f plus i is equal to a. That's the total distance here. And g plus j this distance here is equal to b. So we see that a divided by i is equal to b divided by j. Now let's go back to what we had originally, which is this thing here. And I want to start with this and add 1 to both sides of it. So I'll just try and fit it in up here. i over f plus 1. Well, 1 is just the same as f over f. And I'll add, have to add 1 on to the right hand side. It's j over g plus 1, where I will write 1 as g over g. Now we can get a common denominator on both sides, so we get i plus f over f on the left hand side, and on the right hand side we get j plus g over g. But i plus f is just a, so we end up with a over f, and j plus g is just the total distance here, which is b. And that's what we had to prove.